Okay, what we're doing here, we're going to build our flying carpet with Genie. First, we start off with three sheets of Elmer's foam board. Three sheets, they're 20 inches by 30 inches. We're going to use those to cut. I've got my directions with my razor blade, which I will put on the post where we get the directions from. We've got some painters, mixing sticks used to mount basically a lightweight wood to mount the engine some super glue, two wooden dowels, random wooden uh, square dowels, obviously some foam block, styrofoam block just for random pieces that you can cut, a little bit of packing tape, and then all of your glue gun, marking equipment, and rulers. So basically uh, that's most of the supplies you're going to need as far as your electronics. You're going to need at least two servos, um, a controller or a transmitter that can do Elevon mixing, also known as VTL mixing, kind of the same thing. So make sure you have a controller or a transmitter that's able to do that. Okay, first things first. What I did was take just the standard 20 by 30 in this case. I'm going to scale it down a little bit because Walmart only had the 30 inch. I'll scale it down to 30. You'll basically just take and mark off. 18 inches out of the 30 you could see and then you'll cut your second piece just like so I'll show you right here if you look a little bit here your second piece is just going to go right on top of it and what that's going to do is kind of give it a little airfoil type shape not much but you'll glue it there and what it's going to do is stabilize the, the actual front end to give it a little bit of nose weight because it needs that now what you can do is score between the two sheets just very lightly with a razor blade or a knife or something and then use hot glue to secure Okay, so I've scored the two sides that are going to meet each other and I've glued it on thus creating some sort of airfoil. There's a nice little side profile. Hot glue. Be careful when you're putting the hot glue on because it dries fast. Alright, next what I did was I just cut it's the same width as the actual uh, body of the carpet is going to be. What I did was I cut five inches off of a scrap, just kind of made it straight. You can see I split it down the middle. I'm going to cut it down the middle, and these are going to be my two elevator ailerons or ailerons or ailerons or whatever you want to call them. But um, as soon as I cut those, what I'll do is basically try to cut at 45 degree angle off the port part that I'm actually going to hinge on, and I'll utilize uh, clear packing tape to create the hinges. And uh, I'll get back to you as soon as it's installed. Alright, so you can see right here, basically so far I've cut my two pieces. I've got my flaps that are working on both sides. Uh, make sure they have plenty of throw. You can see that I have a little bit of throw and it goes about the same way each way. i try to get the tape as even as possible. Then what I did was I placed a piece of balsa or small wood. Just kind of glued it on there for a stiffener. And then you're going to have to custom fab this part because this has a lot to do with whatever kind of motor you have. I have an 1800 kV brushless Dietra motor off of my crashed Hawks guy. I basically mounted it right there, a piece of wood. And you can see that I mounted the wood right up next to the actual mount. And you can see it right there. And I gave it a little bit of down and a little bit of left, I do believe, just to kind of counter rotate. Uh, and then basically I ran the wires that are going to go to the ESC and through the bottom, drilled a hole. You can see they came through the top so that I can nice and neatly store everything. So this is so far what I've got on my flying carpet. Okay, this is where I left off. Since I've last left you, you can see I've got some damage there. But basically what I've done is I've installed the ESC. I've installed the servos there glued down got the receiver right there which is I'm using an AR600 so I could pair it with my DX5 with mixing functions because you will require mixing functions um, you can see that I ran the push rods with the push rod covers through a couple of foam blocks okay through a couple of the foam blocks uh, kinda just glued it in there and then there to the control horns right there on the actual uh, flaps themselves whenever you control or glue the control horns on there Make sure you do it on a flat surface so everything is the same. And then just kind of center your servos. 
center the servos as best as possible. Um, that way, whenever you glue them down, make sure that the surfaces stay flat. Uh, <clears throat> also, try to keep in mind, if you can have a little bit of natural up elevator on the flaps, that helps a lot too. You're just going to have to play with it to get the maximum amount of up elevator you can. That way, when you go ahead and... Uh, when you go ahead and trim out, you can get a little bit more up elevator trim naturally from the start and it'll make it fly better. Um, that would be probably the most appropriate. So, so far, I've got my battery lead and everything hooked up, ready to go, and we're going to go ahead and cut Okay, now we're going to work on vertical stabilizer. Alright, as you can see here, I've cut out a 18 by 13 and a half piece of foam board, the same stuff that we're actually going to be using, uh, that we use to build the actual airplane cut out, like I said again, 18 by 13 and a half. And then what I did was I went ahead and drew um, kind of a genie. I got this off the internet uh, from one of the threads talking about how to build this. Just kind of hand drew it. I didn't print it. It's just easier to draw it on there and then you'll cut it out. All right. And then once you cut it out, you color it and then you'll mount it to the actual uh, vertical surface. Make sure you leave yourself enough room whenever you're mounting your servos and stuff so that you can mount this to the surface. All right, so we'll be back. I'll cut it out. All right, so you can see that I've cut out the genie. Um, I'm basically just going to hand this over to my daughter so she can color it in because I'm kind of making this project for her uh, out of the Crash Dynam Hawk Sky that I've had. So basically what you want to do is mount this to the top after it's colored. So I'll get back with you once it's colored and uh, we should be okay. After some coaxing and a little bit of attention grabber, we have colored in with crayons my genie. My daughter helped out. You can actually see down there, we got her to sign it. Charlie and then me. And you can see that we did pretty much oh, excuse me, both sides and we're ready to mount it. And basically, basically we will be mounting it in this configuration see what it's going to look like. But basically he'll be riding his little carpet. Next, what I'll do is design the actual carpet design. Try to do my best top and bottom. Probably keep it, make it simple. And after it's completed, then we'll hot glue everything back together. All I got to do is wait for my prop to come in and prop adapters. Okay, so here we are. Basically what I'm going to do is paint the carpet now. As you can see around the entire outside, all I've got, uh, I just did my own version of what I think a carpet would look like, but I drew a four inch rectangle around there. It's going to create my outside border and then all I'm going to do is color it in with simple Crayola crowns, crayons, and uh, try to make it look like a carpet as much as possible. Next, what I'm going to do is probably take some fringe, put it on the side, probably some party fringe, try to get it to make it look kind of like a fringe carpet, and then uh, I'll get back with you soon. Okay, this is the final product. So basically what we're looking at is our carpet. Stand up here. You've got the full carpet colored in genie sitting on the design carpet with his little frills around the outside. I wanted to use the frills nice and light, so I use that paper banner that you'd hang up for like birthday parties. And if you look really closely, all I did was just cut it with scissors. It took about five, six minutes. All right, a couple lessons learned with the build do not build the motor mount in direct conjunction with the balsa because of the uh, flimsiness of the foam board. As you can see, let me get over to this other side because my battery's right there. But it basically, right there between, it ripped off because of the torque. So what you can see is here, is that basically just designed my own motor mount out of a little bit of aluminum. Go underneath here. Oh, let's see, and I just kind of super glued or hot glued it on there. Really, really easy. Just hot glued and super glued it for now until I can find a better way to secure it. Uh, another thing is is that the metal strip adds a little bit of weight to the front end, which is much needed in order to get the correct center of gravity. The center of gravity should be approximately 25% the width of the entire thing. So if you're looking 25% visually, zoom in, zoom out, and zoom in. You're looking pretty much somewhere right along this area by the servos, all right, which with the metal mount, I actually ended up doing just fine. Uh, I simply just added the genie, a couple little tips. The styrofoam block that I was talking about, I used to glue the genie right up next to it so it gives it a little bit of stability. Make sure you always function check before you 
fly and uh, make sure you have the right prop adapter size for the motor that you're using. Hey, thank you again for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a little bit out of it. Like I said in the comments, I will post the actual link to the forum thread that I got the directions from. That should have a little bit more detailed information as well as far as types of propellers, uh, types of motors that are actually used. So it might work a little bit better. A couple lessons learned, like I said, make sure you do your function checks. Uh, make sure you, you know, fabricate a motor mount that's actually going to work with the setup that you have, mine didn't work. So it's all basically trial and error, that's what it comes to whenever we're doing our scratch builds. I wanna thank you again for watching. Remember, uh, please rate, subscribe, share my videos. Uh, also su subscribe back if you have any questions on the build, anything that I learned, just send me a message or a comment on the, the actual video and I will get back with you pretty quickly. I tend to check my channel every day. So this is Wade again from RC Studio Wade. I appreciate your time and you have a good day.